So the main panel that I use is pretty nice, but it is starting to show its age a little bit. It's about four years old now. So today I've got this curved 32 inch 1440p 144 hertz panel from BenQ that also offers HDR and FreeSync 2. So we're gonna put it through the paces and see how it stacks up. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the EX3203R curved gaming monitor from BenQ. For transparency, this was sent out directly from BenQ for the purposes of this review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So we've got a 32-inch curved 1440p panel with 144 hertz, 4 millisecond graded gray, FreeSync 2, HDR support by way of HDR 400. It'll get you for just under $600 pretty much anywhere you find it. Direct from BenQ at the time of this video, it runs $538. This is a VA panel and versus a TN, it's got some big advantages in terms of color saturation and really deep blacks. In terms of color, this thing really pops. Like they're not the most accurate colors in the world. It wouldn't be my first choice for editing a video, but in terms of gaming, it's really fun. And you don't get any of the backlight bleed issues normally associated with like an IPS panel either. The main thing you sacrifice, if you could even call it that, versus a TN panel is speed. So this will have a four millisecond response time as opposed to a TN that normally comes in at one millisecond. To me, this is irrelevant. Matter of fact, I have yet to meet the person that can feel the difference between those two. One potential drawback of the 32 inch size at 1440p is that you can't see the individual pixels. This all comes down to pixel density. So like on a 24 inch panel, you most likely won't be able to see the individual pixels on 1080p. You move to 27 inch, now you can see the pixels at 1080p p but you can't at 1440 move up to 32 you can see them at 1440 and not at 4k that's how the slide works if you sit far enough back from your display or especially like in something like a racing sim it's not going to make any difference physically it's a gorgeous looking panel both the display and the overall presentation just a really class presentation overall there's nothing gamer going on here at all and that's a big win the stand looks nice but it does have some drawbacks for me i'm not a huge fan of the chrome base as it looks nice when it's clean but it fingerprints up pretty bad if you move your display a lot it also has a couple areas in the stand that look stressed. I don't know. It's weird. It has height adjust of 60 millimeters and front to back tilt of negative 5 to 15 degrees. Doesn't have any kind of swivel. That's fine. That's not mandatory. But at this price point, it is missing any kind of like side to side rotation. And it's not just that it won't do portrait. I wouldn't expect a curved monitor to do that, but it doesn't have any degree of rotation at all. So if you have an uneven floor or an uneven desk, there's really no way to write the monitor. And that's cool. That's fine. I'll just put it on a monitor arm, except, uh, oh, wait, it doesn't include any option for vase amount either. If you want to mount this monitor on an arm, you're going to have to spring for an additional accessory part directly from BenQ. The price of this part is $37. That's a big yikes for me at this price point. Moving on, in terms of connections, this thing is a beast in that department. We're talking two HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort, and USB-C. Never seen anything like it. You also have a headphone jack in there and two USB 3.1 ports. Included cables are a standard DisplayPort, HDMI 2.0, and a DisplayPort to mini DisplayPort. Also worth mentioning here that the power supply is an extra external brick with a barrel connector as opposed to like a standard three prong power cable. All the connections are behind this little removable panel and they're situated vertically. Internal menus are really easy to navigate as well and they keep the lower bezel nice and clean by having them all mounted under the front bezel. There's loads of presets to get you started and the power button actually shines down onto the desk to let you know you've got power on. The curve is 1800R and it's cool. It doesn't add a lot of immersion to the game for me. Probably would if you had the money and the GPU power to handle like three of these side by side. Be pretty sick. Again for editing, the curve is not my favorite but it's it's not so bad that I can't edit on it. I just prefer a flat panel for editing. It's got some bells and whistles in terms of graphic stuff as well. It has variable brightness and contrast, which they call BI plus tech. What this basically does, kind of like your phone screen, depending on the amount of light in the room, whether it's really bright or really dark, the monitor will self adjust to give you the best display it can. And it does work pretty well, but most gamers I know get their panel set like just where they want it and then just leave it there. It also has eye care, which is their blue light filter so it can reduce eye strain for long sessions and it's got anti flicker technology. It is a free sync panel as well. I'd love to tell you more about this, but I actually don't own an AMD card right now. I know, I know. I should probably own at least one for testing. But the big things about FreeSync 2 are one, that it works in conjunction with HDR, and two, that it has a low frame rate compensation for those times when your frame rate dips below the threshold of where that FreeSync kicks in. But what I can tell you is that I really enjoy gaming on it. If it had G-Sync, it would absolutely be on my main desk on an arm, no question. I was really hoping that because a couple BenQ panels are certified for G-Sync, that this would be one of them. Sadly, it's not. I was also hopeful that it may function great with G-Sync even though it's not officially supported. 
It does not. And it's not just like an errant menu screen thing. The whole image has greatly reduced tearing with G-Sync, but it also exhibits like this really weird full screen jitter that's either not too bad or really, really bad depending on the title. On pretty much all accounts, if you're on an NVIDIA card, it's just better to run with the G-Sync off. And I'm spoiled. It's still 144 hertz panel. So at that level, the tearing might not even bother you. So there's an undocumented setting in the menu that allows you to switch between regular free sync and enhanced. The first thing about this is it didn't matter which setting I used, it offered no tangible performance increase for G-Sync compatibility. The G-Sync stuff is weird too because I can't duplicate it every time. It's really sporadic. Like I'd get jitter in some titles. Sometimes the menu screens would flicker whenever I hit escape or tab or like in division two. Sometimes when you're just running around or like especially when you go into the inventory screen, sometimes the display would just blank out for a few seconds and then come back on. But the big thing is that in trying to research this setting, I found numerous complaints from people that were using AMD cards that had really bad issues with ghosting or smudging with this panel and it didn't seem uncommon. All I can tell you about that is that I've used this panel very consistently for about three months time now. You've actually seen gameplay footage from it in numerous videos. I have not had any issues like that whatsoever with this panel, but I'm not using AMD cards, I'm using Nvidia cards, so take that for what it's worth. And let's talk about this HDR10 support because it's a little murky on the PC side. The panel has a max brightness of 400 nit with a full HDR protocol is 1000 nit. So this is gonna be classified as HDR400, which a lot of people will tell you is not true HDR. And they'd be right. What this basically does is ratchets up the brightness of the monitor as far as it can get it, and then it decodes incoming HDR data. So it's not true full HDR, even though it technically supports HDR. I should say too that finding full 1000 nit brightness in computer monitors is very rare. And even in TVs, if you want to get it up that high, you're going to be shelling out some pretty solid money. Tech specs aside, what really matters is what you see on the screen. And sadly, most games and Windows 10 in general just don't do a very great job of presenting HDR HDR on the PC side. It's really inconsistent. If you're on PC, my best advice is to ignore HDR. Outside of HDR, it's still a very impressive looking display. But on console, this monitor unlocks a lot of options. I tested on an Xbox One as my PS4 is not the pro version. It'll do variable refresh. It'll do 120 Hertz, assuming that your console and whatever you're playing can achieve anywhere close to that frame rate. It does HDR, and the HDR on Forza Horizon 4 off the Xbox actually looks really good. The one weird thing is that the Xbox sees the monitor as UHD, so I don't know if it downscales or what, but it still looks super good. Value-wise, this monitor is a really strong contender for best all-rounder, particularly if you're on an AMD card. You've probably seen this monitor in the background on my test desk for quite a while now. That's no accident. Colors pop big time, and I don't think there's any doubt that BenQ makes a quality monitor that you'll own for a long time. There are so many monitors out there now, but I still didn't find a lot when looking for this specific feature set. There's a Samsung C32 HG70 QLED display out there for like 500 bucks. The ROG Swift XG32 VG is out there. You're going to get VESA mounting with that, but you are going to give up one HDMI port and the free sync on that is only Gen 1. So if you know of something out there that's a competitor at this price point or is a much better deal, let me know in the comments. But I feel strong enough about this panel that it gets a really solid recommendation from me. I really wish this stand had some degree of rotation and it's a real shame that there is no VESA mount options included in the box. But because of the numerous connection options, it's really versatile. I could see this being a solid choice for a streamer too because it supports high refresh from the PC and you could have both consoles hooked up. Be a really nice main panel for a streaming setup. It's really solid for movie watching and I really can't stress enough that this panel just looks great. I've grown really attached to it in the time that I've had it. Like I said, if this panel had G-Sync, this would be my main panel easy. Big thanks to BenQ for sending this out. I will leave a few different affiliate links in the description if you want to grab one for yourself. Any questions, hit me up in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.